In Lecture 5 of Electrical Fundamentals, we will uh, zoom in and specifically study parallel circuits. Uh, we will see the related topic of Kirchhoff's current law and the current divider rule. Uh, and we'll see how power uh, can be uh, evaluated for a parallel circuit. In the previous lecture, we saw that series circuits, uh, in them, we pretty much have one loop, and then we have different components that are connected within that loop. In a parallel circuit, it's, it's, uh, it's different. If you see here, you have multiple loops. This is one loop, this is a second, this is a third, this is a fourth. So as soon as you see more than one loop, then you know that you're no longer um, uh, in um, uh, talking simply of a basic uh, series circuit. Uh, you could have a parallel circuit or, and we'll, as we'll see later on, a series parallel circuit, which kind of adds more complexity. But for now, this is what you should uh, realize, is that this is uh, what a parallel circuit looks like. The components, the components, they are connected to each other in a parallel fashion. Um, and what, what is interesting to notice with the parallel circuit is that the current is, has more than one path, right? So the, I mean, if you look, maybe we could show the, you the, the path for the current. So you have current that leaves the source. It leaves the source. Uh, the source is uh, Vs, so maybe we could call the current that leaves the source as Is. Uh, and then this current uh, will be split in different path. Part of the current will come here to R1, part of it will go to R2, part of it will go to R3, and then the remaining part will go to uh, R4. And we can, in fact, give them names. Let's just call them maybe I1, uh, because it's resistor 1. This we could call I2, related to resistor 2. This is the current that goes through I3. And then this is the current that goes into uh, R4. And what's interesting is that on the other end, on the other end, in the second node, all these different currents, right, they, they pass through. There's a path for the current to pass through. And they re-emerge together. They re-emerge. And when they re-emerge, what you get is basically back what, you, what, 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 what we what went through, right? So you'll get your IS back again. So in other words, just by looking at this, you could notice that the total current, or if you will, the source current, is nothing else but the addition of these different currents. I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus I4. And this is what you, you, you should realize, is that with a parallel circuit, right, we have more than one path for the current. Um, with a CV circuit, this wasn't the case. You only had one current, and it was the same everywhere. Uh, every, all the components were connected in a loop, and all the different currents that go through the different resistors were pretty much the same. Uh, they were all equal to each other. Here, no. The current that you have is split among different branches, and then it recollects. You can think of this uh, as maybe we said uh, in lecture three, that you can think of a circuit as a water pipeline. So imagine water coming in in a pipeline, and then the, the pipeline has a network to it, right? So it's split to different uh, areas. Let's say if you have a building, part of the water that comes to the, uh, to the building will go to the first floor, to the second floor, to the third, and to the fourth. And, th and that's kind of a, 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 a some analogy for you to, to see how this is done. Another thing that is interesting to notice here is that resistors that are connected um, uh, in parallel, they will be connected to the same node, right? They are connected to the same node. There are basically just two nodes. When you have components connected in parallel, you will need just two nodes. All of this, although you see a dot here, a dot here, a dot here, they are in reality just one node. This is just one node. And if you look on the other side, these ones here, this too, this is this is another node. This is uh, also another node, the second node, second node. So you have all these different components that are connected between these two nodes. Right? And the, the, that's what kind of forms a, a parallel circuit. And of course, you also have your source that is connected um, in parallel to these different nodes.
uh, to these different components. The next thing that we want to uh, mention to you uh, is, what, well, now that we understood that the current uh, in a parallel circuit is essentially a split between the different branches, well, what can we say about the voltages in a parallel circuit? Uh, so this is actually very interesting to, to, to realize. And in, in fact, it's a very uh, nice result that you get. Uh, and let's read it together. Because all the components are connected are connected across the same voltage source, right? so you have this component is connected across this voltage source, this component connected across this voltage source, this component connected across this voltage source. They're all connected across the same voltage source. It doesn't change, it's just the same one. They're all connected in parallel. Uh, the voltage will be the same, right? So the voltage here, this 5 volts, will in fact be the voltage of resistor 1. Uh, this 5 volts will also be the voltage of resistor 2. This 5 volts will also be the, the voltage of resistor 3. Okay, so, uh, I mean, this is an example here. We give you the circuit, you know, three resistors. Um, we have a source of 5 volts DC. And then we ask you, well, okay, what if we have a DMM? And then we set the DMM to uh, the, to the voltage setting. What would we read in the uh, for the DMM? Well, like we said, because they're connected in parallel, we expect the reading to be uh, 5 volts. So this is, of course, the source, and therefore the DMM will read 5 volts. Uh, if you take another DMM or you change it to a different channel, on, uh, uh, then, then you'll get that. Uh, and if you do uh, another one, you'll, you'll have this one here. And another measurements with your DMM, you'll have the same thing. So uh, just a way to realize that all the probes and the DMMs will give essentially give you the same measurement. It's going to be 5 volts. And again, this is true because they are connected in parallel. And this is what you should realize is that when you have a circuit that is connected in series, the current is the same, but the voltage will be different for each resistor. Whereas in a parallel circuit, the current is different for each resistor, but the voltage is the same. So it's kind of the, the reverse between parallel uh, and series circuits. Okay. In a series circuit that we saw last lecture, we realized that the total resistance is simply found by adding the value of each of the resistor. Uh, in a parallel circuit, the, to find the total resistance, we don't necessarily add the resistors. Uh, in fact, adding the resistors will not give the total resistance. It will give us a, a wrong, misleading answer. So how do we find the total resistance in, in a parallel circuit? Well, we do the following. We take the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals of individual resistors. Now, I do recognize that this statement could be a bit hard to understand. So let's show it to you mathematically what it means. So if you have here, you have your uh, circuit, you have a source, you have different uh, components, resistor one, resistor two, resistor three. And if you notice, um, the, the resistors that, uh, that you have, uh, uh, they are in parallel, right? You have one node in the bottom, you have another node on top, and they're all connected to these two nodes. And the total resistance will be the one over, right? You do one over the first resistor, one over the second resistor, one over the third resistor, and then you do uh, one over the entire thing. And, and so that, that kind of relates to, to this part. Maybe I could uh, highlight it so you see. So this part here sum of the uh, reciprocals of individual resistors is this part here. It's this part here. And uh, the other statement, reciprocal of the, the entire sum is this one here. This is the minus one. So that's kind of how, how the statement is read. Uh, but uh, again, uh, it's just it's just realizing that you have to take the reciprocal of the individual uh, of the individual resistors, and then the sum the sum that you get you flip it. So if you have a fourth resistor, well, you simply add a plus one over four, uh, and then the sum you flip it. You do one over that, or you just do it to the minus one. Okay. Uh, and, and that's very important. Now, I do see that I did see this in the past when I taught this course. Students, what they do when we ask them to find the total resistance, some students, uh, perhaps they're doing it a bit too quick. They do the reciprocal. They do the one over R1. 
but then they forget to to flip it. They for, the, the sum they forget to flip it. They forget to 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 do the uh, the the one over the, after doing the sum. So please don't forget your your to the power of minus one after that, right? So that uh, that takes care of of the flipping. Otherwise, your result will not be uh, correct. Okay, so um, maybe I could uh, erase this so we can see a bit better uh, what's going on here. Uh, that's it. So if we do it for this example um, and, and we work the uh, the math, we get a total resistance of 386 ohm. Now notice this: in it in a series uh, uh, circuit, when you added the resistor, the total resistance was always larger than each of the, any of the individual resistors. In a parallel circuit, the total resistance will always be smaller than the smallest resistance. And in fact, this is what I wrote to you here. Remember this, this is very important. And that's why I put it in yellow. The total resistance in a parallel circuit is always smaller than the smallest individual resistance. Okay, so let's unpack that. What, the, what does it mean? So essentially you come in, you look at your resistors. This is 1.5, this is 2.2, this is 0 0.68 kilo ohm. Right, 1.5, 2.2, 0.68. Which one is the smallest among these three? Well, clearly this one is the smallest. So now we expect that the total uh, uh, RT to be smaller than 680 ohms. That's what we expect. Without even doing any math, we expect that, right? This is this is why it, it's actually this yellow box is very is very useful. To, to know certainly useful for sanity check when you do an exam um, if you do an exam and then you get a result that uh, you know you want to check if you did your result correctly you could right away do run the sanity check you could check the result that you got this one here and then you can ask yourself is it smaller than the smallest resistance if it is you know you're probably on the right track if it's not then you know you did some something wrong perhaps you forgot to do the minus uh, to, to the one over at the end Okay, so this is very uh, useful to know. On the previous slide, we saw how we can find the total uh, resistance uh, when resistors are connected in parallel uh, in a generic way. But what if we only have two resistors? So this is really exclusively for the scenario where we only have two resistors. And so like, like you have here, R1 and R2, and these two resistors are connected in parallel. We have two nodes, the top node, the bottom node. And what we're asking you to find is what is the total resistance? In other words, what is the resistance uh, here? Right? So sometimes we just do an arrow like this and we say find RT between these two nodes, between this node and this node. In other words, if you have a DMM and you set it to measure uh, uh, resistance uh, and you put the leads between these two uh red dots that, that I did, uh, what would you see? What are the total resistance uh, of the combination of these two uh, resistors placed in parallel? So here we go back to the same formula, right? So the same formula that we showed you before, uh, we do the reciprocal, we do one over R1 plus one over R2, and we do the reverse. So you can certainly go back to this generic formula to find the answer. And if you want, you could always do that. But sometimes it might be easier to work it through, work it through, maybe put them under the same uh, denominator, uh, uh, denominator, right? So they're both, uh, they have R1, R2, and so you could add the numerators together, then you flip it, and this is what you get. This is actually very easy to remember, right? So when you have two resistors that are placed in parallel, you multiply them on top and you add them in the bottom. So you do a ratio of multiple on top, addition in the bottom. And this could be very useful for analysis. It's certainly much, much easier to do than, than this one here, right? So uh, I think it's not a bad idea to remember this. Uh, quite often uh, when you, we do analysis and we only have two resistors, we'll usually use this as opposed to, to this one here. This is, might be a bit too tedious to do. This is much quicker to do. So this is a, an interesting result that I highly recommend that you uh, memorize and perhaps use whenever we do labs or, or in an evaluation and so on. It will get you to the result much quicker. Okay, 
So let's see maybe an example here. Uh, so uh, question two, what is the total resistance of R1 equals to this and R2 equals to 56? And they are placed in, in parallel. So in other words, this is what we have. We have two resistors, R1, we have R2, and we want to find the total resistance here. So RT, right? And th that is between these two nodes. And this is your R1. And this is your R2. Okay, so if we do the analysis, basically uh, what, what it means is we simply multiply 27 by 56. And in the, the denominator, we do 27 plus 56. And that should give us the result. And the result that we get should be smaller than the smallest resistance. So if we have 27 kilo ohm, the total resistance that we get should be less than 27 kilo ohm. So let's just check. Uh, we do this. We do, use this formula here. And then we get 18.2 kilo ohm. If we do a quick sanity check, is the result that we get um, appropriate? Well, it is because it is smaller than 27, and therefore uh, it seems uh, correct. And it is correct. Okay, so at this point, we want to maybe find different uh, parameters uh, in a parallel circuit. So current, resistance, voltage, and power. And this is uh, perhaps mentioned to you before. Uh, we've seen uh, s such a table before uh, in the previous lecture when we saw uh, a series circuit. This is very common. We will typically have these kind of tables to fill in for uh, different circuits. Um, so let's, let's attempt at solving this. So we have the same uh, circuit that we saw uh, previously. Uh, we saw the circuit uh, two slides ago where we determined the R total here. If I recall, uh, this R total that, uh, that we obtained was, um, was, uh, uh, ha was a value of 386 ohms. And this is smaller than the smallest resistance, which is smaller than this one here. And that's what we got. And this result is, it will be useful because we'll need it for the analysis here. Uh, let's also make sure that we have uh, uh, the, uh, the ground. It's always good to show the, the reference uh, for the ground. And at this point, what we could uh, essentially do is maybe just determine the, uh, the, the, the path for the, uh, for the current. This is always a, a first step uh, that, that could be useful to, to, to do. So we have the circuit here. We have a DC source. The current will leave the DC source. It will come in this way here. Uh, part of the current will come to this resistor. Part of the current will go to resistor 2. And the remaining part of the current will go to resistor 3. Let's annotate it. So let's call the, uh, this part, maybe, um, maybe put it on this side. So uh, this part will be uh, referred to as I1 uh, because it passes through resistor 1. This is referred to as I2 because it passes through resistor 2. And this is referred to as I3 because it passes through resistor 3. And this is what you have here. So uh, I1 here, I2 here, I3 here. And where is I total? Well, I total will be here, right? The total uh, current, sometimes we refer to it uh, as IS because this is a source, so it has the same um, S as that, but I total is fine as well. So then the current will pass through the resistor. It will go to the other side uh, of the resistor, and then uh, it will gradually um, combine itself until it reaches the I total uh, that we had. So I total is found back again at this point and it goes back again to the source. Okay, so this is the path of the current. I think it's also practical to show where the voltages are because the path is like this. We have a plus, the minus, this is your V1, the plus, the minus, this is your V2. And we also have the plus and the minus and this is your V3. So now we have the voltages, these, uh, these voltages, V1, V2, V3, and the source Vs, well, it's here, right? So this is your Vs, this is the plus of the, uh, of the source, and this is the minus. So that, this we also have, and we know the value of it is 5 volts. And so this is equal to 5 volts. Okay, so without even uh, uh, maybe uh, breaking our head too much, we could right away find these voltages. Because all the components are connected in parallel, we expect these voltages to be uh, uh, equal to 5 volts. This should be 5 volt. This should also be 5 volt because they're connected in parallel. 
uh, and this should also equal to 5 volts. Okay, so let's just uh, put that uh, in the table, and this is uh, exactly what, what we have. Uh, the next thing that we could do is uh, perhaps determine the current. We could maybe begin by determining the, uh, the total current. We could determine this one here. Uh, so how do we determine the total current? Well, we could find an equivalent circuit. The equivalent circuit is, uh, is, is as follows. So we have the circuit. We find the equivalent circuit. In other words, we uh, redo the, uh, the circuit. Uh, but now we, we could show it with only uh, one uh, resistor. Only one resistor. So we have a source, we have one resistor, our total, and we have the ground uh, in the bottom. Uh, the source has a voltage of five volts. This is five volts. And then this is called our total. And like we said, we found it two slides back that our total is 386 ohms, right? 386 ohms. And now we could certainly find this current, this current IT. I total the current that is flowing out of the source this thing here we could find it so basically just to use ohm's law i'm <clears throat> sorry about that so it is is equal to the voltage so it's equal to five volts divided by the resistance which is 386 and we could uh, see what we get so let's take a calculator five divided by 386 and this gives us <clears throat> sorry um, this gives us uh, 12, uh, basically 13, roughly, uh, I can just write it, 12.95 milliamps, milliamps, okay? Uh, so let's uh, see if that's what uh, we got here. This is what we should get for uh, this one here, okay? 12.95 milliamps. So, uh, well, let me just show all of them and then we'll try to derive them. So 12.95, roughly 13. So this is exactly uh, what we got. So, uh, so far we got this, we got this, we got this, we got this. We also obtained uh, this one here. So that's great. Uh, that's uh, a first step that we did. Now, the next thing that we want to do, we do have the result because I've done it in advance, but let's see how we get them. So we want to find I1, I2, and I3. Uh, so in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, erase this part so we have more space uh, to work. And we will uh, go ahead and try to determine I1, I2, and I3. For uh, determining I1, I2, and I3, we could use uh, the uh, uh, Ohm's law. Uh, if you will, or we could also use the current divider rule, but let's just use uh, Ohm's law in this case. We have the voltage. Um, we have the voltage uh, here, right? So we know the voltage for uh, resistor one is five volts. We know the value also for the resistor is 680. We could certainly find the current here, I1. So I1 using Ohm's law could simply be equal to the voltage, which is five volts. And we divide it by the resistance, which is uh, 680 we could just write it as 0 0.68 and this should give us the value for current one just do it 5 divided by 0 0.68 and that gives us 7.35 7.35 milliamps milliamps so this is uh, also great we found this one here now what we could do is we could also find uh, the current uh, through the second uh, resistor. So it's the voltage, which is also five volts, five volts divided by the resistance. The resistance is 1.5K, 1.5K. And this gives us a current of uh, 3.33 milliamps, 3.33 milliamps okay and let's see if we uh, got that so that's exactly what we have so this is also good the next thing that we need to do is we need to find the res the current through the third resistor so we have i3 and uh, again we follow the same steps we basically uh, do 5 volts uh, divided by 1 2.2k 2.2k 
and this should give us the value. So 5 divided by 2.2, .2, and this should be 2.27, 2.27 milliamps, milliamps. And that's uh, also uh, what we got here. For I3, we could have also obtained it using KCL, Kirchhoff's current law. Um, and, and through uh, Kirchhoff's current law, we, 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 we could have uh, KCL, right? So here, what we could have done is we could have said that I total is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. Uh, so I total is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. And we have all of them. We have I total. It is 13 milliamps. We have I1. It is 7.35. We have I2. It is um, uh, 3.33. And therefore, we could right away just determine what uh, this one is, I3, by isolating for that. So we take I total, the 13. We subtract from it I1, which is 7.35. We also subtract from it I2, which is 3.33, and this should give us our uh, uh, value uh, uh, for, uh, for I3, which is roughly 2.3 uh, milliamps. So there's different ways of getting that, but, but that's good. We, we got it here. Now what we have left is basically just to find the, the power. For the power, um, I think this kind of goes without saying, right? For power, we could just use Watt's law. You could use any of the three different ver uh, forms of Watt's law, but I think the one that is the easiest would be just to multiply the voltage with the current, and this should get you the value. So if we do 7.35 times 5, you could just do it, 7.35 times 5, this should be 36.75 milliwatt. If we do 3.33 times 5, this should be 16.65 uh, uh, milliwatts or 16.7 milliwatts and if we do 2.27 times uh, 5 this should give us 11.4 uh, uh, milliwatts and finally if we do 13 uh, times uh, milliwatts times 5 volts this should give us uh, 65 uh, milliwatts roughly 65 milliwatts in fact this you can you could have also found uh, this 65 this total 65 watts by simply adding these uh, these values. We could have simply added these values, and this would have brought us to here as well. And this is this comes through the concept of uh, of the superposition of power. So if you do 36.8, you add it to 16.7, you add it to 11.4. This brings us to the total uh, power that we obtained. Okay. I kind of briefly mentioned KCL on the previous slide. And essentially, <clears throat> KCL or Kirchhoff's current law can be summarized as follows. It is the sum of the currents entering a node, uh, which is equal to the sum of currents leaving a node. So um, I think it, it could be uh, easy if we look at it in an example. So this is exactly uh, what, what we did here. Essentially, so let's say in, in this example, uh, we have uh, a, a node. Uh, let me just uh, pick a... Uh, color here for you so we have this node here and what we have is we have a different uh, 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 branch right so we have a branch here that comes in so this branch is the current that comes into the node right and then now you have different uh, current that comes out of the node you have one branch comes out of the node here and then this is what comes out of the node so essentially uh, the way you would uh, do this uh, you would say anything that goes into the node, so let's maybe annotate them. Uh, so we could just uh, give them some, some uh, naming. So like we did on the previous slide, this is I total. Uh, this is I, uh, maybe I could use green, I1. And this is I, uh, this is a combination of both, I2 and I3. So let's just call it, I don't know, um, I2 slash 3 because it's both. It's the current for both of them. It's added. It's the current of I2 plus the current of I3. This branch here, this line, this specific line here. So what we could say is uh, is I total uh, because I total goes to the node. We could just write it as plus I total, and because I1 is leaving the node, we could just write it as minus I1. 
and because i2 3 uh, or let's just call it i naught so it doesn't confuse you i naught but let's just between you and i you should know that i naught is essentially uh, these two the current that flows in here i2 and also the current that flows in here i3 okay so i naught is equal to i2 uh, plus i3 okay so uh, we could say that this is uh, we have this note, I T goes into the note, so we write plus uh, I T. I one leaves the note, so we write minus I one, and I not leaves the note, so we also write minus I not, and this would equal to zero. This equals to zero, and this is really the definition of KCL. So in this case, what we could do is we could basically just um, uh, rearrange the terms we could simply just write that i total is equal to uh, i1 plus i naught and this is what we have uh, through kcl okay so now if you uh, if you look at this uh, can we see kcl um, in, in in this table we can certainly see kcl if you add i1 i2 and i3 together because we know that they're the addition of each other, right? I naught is I2 plus I3. This will eventually get us to IT. This here, you could clearly see KCL. So I could just show it to you as well. Maybe we could erase this part here. So we, maybe we could erase. So we clean up this, this here a bit. We could clearly see that uh, the current from a source is equal to the sum of the branch currents. So for a series circuit, we saw that we use the voltage divider rule. When we have a parallel circuit, we have a rule that kind of resembles the, that, uh, but it is specifically tailored for parallel circuit, and is re it is referred to as the current divider rule. Uh, the approach is, uh, is, uh, is very straightforward. Um, so it is really explained here, but I think instead of reading this, well, I could just show you the equation and it will make more sense. So let's maybe look at this example here. We do have a source and we have a bunch of resistors that are connected in parallel to the source. Um, if you see, we have the, the, uh, the current that is supplied from the source, we could call it IS or if you will, I total. And this current will be split among the different branches. So part of it will come to resistor one, other parts will go to resistor two, and the remaining will go to resistor three. So that's what we refer to them as, as I1, I2, I3. And the question is, how do we find these currents? So, um, of course, you could always find them using KCL and you could always find them using Ohm's law. Uh, but here, knowing a voltage divider rule will be very practical. Just knowing this, knowing the resistance, you could right away find these currents. So this would be a very practical skill to put in your toolkit as we solve more advanced courses. And you'll see as we go into more advanced um, uh, topics in this uh, uh, course, uh, especially after the, uh, the the break that we will have after the reading week, uh, we will use all these skills. We will use voltage divider rule. We will use current divider rule uh, in addition to Ohm's law, to Watt's law, and, and the rest. Okay. So the equation is really this one here. This equation is really what is explained here. Right. So this box, uh, maybe I could uh, show you this box here. And this are are essentially the same. So this explanation here is basically uh, what you have here. Uh, so what we're telling you is that the current at each branch, this I1, I2, I3, uh, we simply call it I sub I, a small i, um, and there's maybe N of them, maybe you have N branches, it's equal to the total, to the total uh, current, this thing here, total current, sometimes we call it IS, the current from the source, and we do a ratio of something on top some numerator and some denominator in the numerator uh, you will have the total resistance and in the denominator you have the specific uh, the specific um, uh, value uh, for the resistance related to this if you're looking for i don't know i1 in the bottom you will put i1 if you're looking for i2 in the bottom you will put i2 uh, if you're looking for i3 in the bottom you put i3 now, uh, myself, uh, I, I'm not a big fan of memorizing uh, equations, so my trick to always know uh, current divider rule and voltage divider rule is that I, I will look at the, um, at the joint current 
and I will do a ratio of small, the small value over a large value. Uh, now you might say, well, what do you mean small? It's our total. Isn't it supposed to be large because it's the total resistance? No, because in when we talk of a parallel circuit, the total resistance will be smaller than the smallest resistor. Right? If I take the these three resistors together uh, and I call it RT, right, our total, it, the resistance will be smaller, this one here, will be smaller than the smallest of these three resistors. Right? So that's why the top will always be a small uh, ohm, small resistance value, and in the bottom you will have a large resistance value. And this ratio will give you uh, the current that is flowing through the resistor. Okay, um, and, and, and that's the trick. And the same thing is also true when we talk about a series circuit. In series circuit, we saw the voltage divider rule. In the voltage divider rule, we show you something like this. VI is equal to VS, and then we do a ratio of uh, a small value, which uh, could be uh, the resistor uh, that you have, over a large value, which is the total resistance. So in series, the total resistance is, is in the bottom because in, when we talk of series circuits, this value here is large, right? This is large. And this is small in a series circuit. Whereas in a parallel circuit, this value is uh, small and this value is large. So this is kind of my, my, my trick to always remember voltage divider rule and current divider rule without necessarily memorizing anything. Okay, so let's maybe uh, show continue here. So we could certainly use uh, the current divider rule here to find I1. And if we do that, we just put I1 is equal to the I total, this one here. And we do a ratio of the total resistances, these three resistances. We find the total resistance. Uh, we put it on top. We put the specific resistor in the bottom. We do the same thing for the second one. Um, we could do the same thing for the third one, but that would be a lot of work for no, for it would be working too hard, right? So why work hard? We could work smart, right? So we could always find the third one using KCL. Uh, so if we use KCL, uh, we could then say that the total current is equal to uh, I1 plus I2 plus I3, we have the total current, it's given to us. We have I1 and I2, we just found it using the current divider rule. So we could always find the third one, I3. So we could find it using KCL. So this is uh, what 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 is uh, important here, is this part here, is that we could find it because of KCL. And we do this because we have this, this is given to us. This I1, we calculated it using current divider rule. This I2 we calculated using the current divider rule. And uh, so now the I3 can be found uh, easily. Okay. Uh, by the way, um, uh, the, the total resistance with three resistors is, of course, through the equation for uh, finding the total resistance, which is this one here. And this is what uh, you put here on top and what you put here. And this will be smaller than the smallest resistance. Another thing that maybe I should mention um, is that sometimes when we say two resistors are in parallel, if I want to say, let's say, let's say I have a circuit, maybe I could show it here very small, in a small way. So I have a circuit, I have two resistors. I have one resistor, I have another resistor. And I tell you that these two resistors, R1 and R2, are in parallel. They're in parallel. So is there a shorthand notation that electrical engineers like to use? Uh, well, the answer is yes, there is. So instead of saying R1 and R2 are in parallel or writing this in text, we usually use this shorthand notation. R1, we do two bars, they're tilted. It looks like a divide, but it's not a divide. Uh, and we write R2, okay? So if you ever see this, something like this, if you ever see um, something like this, let me just highlight it, R1, two bars R2, it means that resistor one is in parallel with resistor two. So this is a shorthand notation that is commonly used in, uh, in electronics uh, engineering, okay? So in question six, we will see an example for uh, the current divider rule. 
So we're asking us, what is the current I1 and what is the current I2 in this circuit? So if we see this circuit, um, this is of course a parallel circuit. We have two nodes, uh, the node on top for the positive uh, voltage value and the node on the bottom for the um, ground for zero volts. And uh, we have two resistors. Well, the first resistor is 2.2 uh, kilo ohm. The second resistor is 4.7 uh, kilo ohm. Uh, typically, or sometimes, we give you the value for the voltage, uh, but in here we didn't give you this. We gave you uh, IS, or if you will, I total, the, the current that flows out of the source, and we are telling us that this uh, current, uh, so we're giving us the current from the source, we're told that this current is 8 milliamps. Uh, so knowing that the main uh, current from the source is 8 milliamps, we're wondering what is the current now uh, that is split for resistor 1 and what is the current that is split for resistor 2. So uh, we pretty much have no choice but to use uh, the, um, uh, the, the current divider rule. In fact, that's not quite true. We could also use Ohm's law. We find the total resistance here. We could then uh, use uh, uh, Ohm's law to find the voltage across uh, uh, to find Vs. And once we find Vs, we can then use it with the resistance to find the current. So there is a, other pathways uh, to finding the answer. But I think the smartest way to find current I1 uh, would be to uh, essentially use the current divider rule. So uh, maybe uh, what we could do before that is just kind of annotate the, the circuit. So we have our I1 here, we have I2 there. Uh, and the addition of both I1 and I2 will give us this 8 milliamp. Uh, the currents will then leave the resistors and then uh, they will join again. Uh, and as they join again, we get our 8 milliamps and this goes back uh, to the source. So this is always a good practice to, to show the, uh, the trace uh, of the current in the circuit. So now what we could uh, essentially do is just write the expression for the uh, current divider rule. And if you notice, this is what uh, the expression tells us. So we're wondering what is current I1? Um, by the way, we could have solved one or the other. We could have began with either finding I1 and then finding I2. Or if we wanted, we could have right away began in finding I2 and then uh, to find I1. But let's in this case, let's just find I1 first. Um, so it is the uh, total current, uh, and then we do a ratio, a ratio of uh, a, um, a small value on top in a large value in the bottom, right? So it's always like this. Uh, maybe I could mention it here. So um, I1 is equal to I total, a ratio of small, over large okay small would be uh the the resistance that will produce a small value if you look at it it's really r1 in parallel with r2 that will produce a small value and uh large would be the the value of the resistance related to this what is the resistance related to i1 well it's r1 Right, it's R1, it's this one here, right? Um, and, and like we said, when you have two resistors in parallel, they will always be smaller than the smallest value, right? And that's why we say small, right? So it's gonna always be smaller than, so if you look at R1 and R2, the smallest one is this one. Uh, it just happens to be this one, it's 2.2. So it will certainly be uh, less than 2.2K. That's what we mean by R total here, R total. Right, so it's really R1 in parallel uh, with uh, R2. Okay, so let's just write that. Uh, we write it here. So our total is really R1 in parallel with R2. And in the bottom, we have R1. And then we could maybe uh, use the expression for uh, two resistors that are in parallel. And we know that we, when we have two resistors in parallel, we multiply the values and we add their values. And we also have our R1 in the bottom. We put it in here. Now what we could do is we could simplify. So we could uh, remove uh, R1 and R1. And we are left with R2 in the top. And we have R1 plus uh, R2 in the bottom. And of course we multiply with I total this 8 milliamp that we have, right? This is uh, 8 milliamps, okay? 
so now let's maybe uh, plug in uh, some uh, values and uh, we put in the, the related values, eight for uh, eight milliamps for the total current, 4.7 for the uh, for R2, and then 2.2 plus 4.7. We don't need to write K because everything is in uh, kilo. Uh, so, uh, so that takes care of kilo divided by kilo goes away. And then eight is a milli. So we expect the final answer to be in milli. So we get 5.45 milliamps, and that's the value for uh, I1. So that's great. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is essentially figure out what is I2. Now for I2, we could also use a current divider rule, but if we use a current divider rule for I2, it would be working too hard for no, not a lot of benefit. I mean, it, it has the benefit of finding the answer, but why should we work hard? Let's work smart. So in that case, what we could do is we simply use KCL. We know that the total current will equal I1 uh, plus I2. Right, so from KCL, total current is equal to I1 plus I2. Uh, and now we have I1, we have I total, we have no idea what I2 is. We don't know what this is, right? Um, so what we could do is we, we could isolate for I2, okay? Uh, if we do that, I2 would equal uh, this expression here, right? So it, it would uh, equal to um, uh, the total minus uh, I1, plug in the values, 8 minus 5.45, and we get 2.55 milliamps. So now we really found this current, and we found the other current. Um, and and that's, that's pretty much uh, it. Now, maybe one other observation here is that in a parallel circuit, in a parallel circuit, um, uh, of course, we have our Ohm's law, right? We have Ohm's law. Maybe I could kind of rewrite it again. V is equal to Ri. Uh, but in a parallel circuit, the voltage will remain constant. Voltage is constant. It doesn't change. So the relationship between current and resistance, current and resistance is inversely proportional to each other, right? Uh, here, the voltage is the same, right? The same voltage we have here, the same voltage will be here, V1 and voltage V2. They are all equal, right? So V1 is equal to V2 is equal to Vs, right? We don't know the value here, we didn't do it. Uh, we could certainly find it because we have resistance and current, uh, but uh, they're all the same, so it is fixed. So in this relationship, in a parallel circuit, as the uh, uh, resistance become larger, the current is in fact smaller, right? So for R2, it ha it's a larger resistor, 4.7K, the current is smaller. R1 is a smaller resistor. The current is larger. So uh, you can always see this relationship because of Ohm's law. So here, let's look for uh, in an attempt at uh, figuring out what is the dissipated power in a parallel circuit. So here we give you a parallel uh, circuit. You have your source, you have different components that are connected to the source, and they're all connected in parallel. Here we only show you three resistors, but you could think of this as a generic uh, circuit. You may have up to N resistors. Um, so maybe we could annotate this circuit, and this will help us determine the, uh, the dissipated power. So for the uh, across the first resistor, we will have a voltage V1. Across the second resistor, we'll have a voltage V2. And across the third resistor, we'll have a voltage V3. And this could go on uh, until, uh, let's say, Vn if we have. Now, wh what is uh, kind of interesting to, uh, to notice is that because this is a parallel circuit, all the voltages, V1, V2, V3, all the way to Vn, if we have N resistors, they will all have the same value they will all have the value of the source. And again, because they are connected in a parallel uh, circuit. And you know it's parallel because you really have two nodes, one node on top here, this major node, and one node on the bottom here, this node where uh, it's connected to the ground, okay? So uh, the next thing that we wanna see is we wanna see how uh, current is uh, flowing in this uh, circuit. So if you notice here, we have the current that leaves the source uh, let's call it IS so that it's consistent with this. This is VS. And this current is split between uh, the first branch that goes to resistor 1, uh, called I1, resistor 2, I2, resistor 3, I3. And if we have more branches, well, it will go to the others. 
Uh, and once it passes through the resistors, uh, it will show up on the other end. And right? so you'll have here, uh, the after it goes through the resistor one, you'll have it after going through resistor two, after going through resistor three, and it will merge back again to find, to, to kind of reform your, uh, your total resistance, uh, and it goes back to the source. Okay, now what we can notice uh, from this um, kind of uh, uh, trace of the current on the circuit is we can right away write a relationship for the current. And the relationship that we write for the current is as follows. So the total uh, uh, current or the current from the source is equal to the individual res uh, currents that are added together. So here we show it to you in a generic way up to n branches. So imagine you have n resistors, you'll have uh, you need to add the current that goes through all of them. Okay, so so this we also found from KCL from Kirchhoff's current law. This is from uh, a per, for a parallel circuit. This is from KCL. The next thing that we want to identify is well, uh, so we we are really interested to find the power dissipated by the components, power dissipated by the resistors. So we'll need to find the power dissipated by resistor one, power dissipated by resistor two power dissipated by resistor three, and all the way if we have whatever, N resistors. So if you, uh, if you, if we want to do this right now, we could simply annotate it as P1 for the power dissipated by the first resistor, P2 power dissipated by the second resistor, P3 for the power dissipated by the third resistor. And the total power will always be this, right? The total power dissipated will be, well, let's just call it PT. It will be the addition of the power dissipated in each of the components. So you simply add them together, okay? And by the way, this equation is true for both, for series and for parallel circuit. Doesn't matter how your circuit is connected. Um, every component will consume, uh, will dissipate some power. And if you want to find the total power, you simply add them together. So it doesn't matter if it is a series, uh, if it, the circuit is connected in series or the circuit is connected in parallel, the equation will always be this. Uh, be careful uh, uh, because I've, I've known students, they think it, it's going to be different depending on how the circuit is connected. No. So the answer is no. It's going to always be like this. You simply add the power uh, that is dissipated through each of the components. Okay. So this is really superposition of power. Uh, now, so maybe the other question is, well, okay, that's, that's fine. We did find this, but what are the individual powers? Like, how do you find this P1, this P2, and this P3? So we know this from a Watt's law that power is equal to voltage times current, power is equal to uh, current squared times resistance, and power is equal to voltage uh, uh, squared divided by resistance. And in fact, the smartest way to determine the individual powers, these PIs, uh, P1, P2, P3, and so on, uh, is really to use the voltage squared divided by resistance. This is the better option. If you look at current time resistance, well, current, we, we will need to find it. We need to find each current here. And if we were to find each current, that's possible. It's not impossible, but it will take us some time. We need to actually uh, apply the uh, uh, current divider rule, determine the current, and then we, we can use P is equal to VI or P is equal to I squared uh, times R. Whereas if, you, if we simply use the voltages, we know the voltage will be the same everywhere. So that's much easier to do uh, uh, like this. Right? We simply take the voltage of the source, and that's going to be the voltage uh, across each resistor. Uh, so we can simply take that, and we simply divide by the value of the resistance. So this is much, much easier to use. P is equal to V squared divided by R. And now we pretty much have everything. You have the individual powers of each resistor. You simply take the value of the source, you divide it by the value of the resistance, and you do this for each resistor, and then the total power will be simply the addition of that. And that's it. Question seven, what is the total power if 10 volts DC is applied to a parallel circuit with two resistors, R1, 270, or 250? So in other words, we give you a circuit, and we tell you what is the power dissipated by this uh, circuit. So if you notice in the circuit, uh, well, first of all, you just inspect it and look at it. Is this a series circuit? Is it a parallel circuit? Clearly, it is a parallel. These components are placed in parallel uh, to the source. Um, the, uh, the source is 10 volts, and we have the current R1 and R2. It is always a good practice to figure out the path for the current. 
So current flies, uh, not flies, but actually flows this way. Uh, it goes here. It goes to the other resistor R2. Uh, it leaves the resistor R2 and it reaches here. And then it also uh, the resistance from R1 reaches here. And then we go back uh, to the source. Okay, uh, we may annotate them if, if need be. So this would be VI1, this would be uh, I2. Uh, and we could also annotate the voltages. This would be plus or minus V1, and this would be plus or minus V2. Because it is a circuit that is connected, the components are connected in parallel, we could right away identify that uh, V1, right, the voltage V1, is equal to the voltage V2. Voltages will be equal to each other because they're placed in parallel, which is equal to the source, to V source, right? Which is also equal to 10 volts. So everything, all the voltages are equal to 10 volts. So this is uh, great. We got this. We know this right away because it's a parallel circuit. What about I1 and I2? Well, I1, we have no idea what it is. We don't know what it is. I2, we also don't know what it is. And also, oh, I forgot to annotate the other one. I total the, uh, or I ask, if you will, the, the current from the source. We also don't know what uh, it is. So I ask, we also don't know what it is. But at least we know something from KCL. From KCL, we know that there's a relationship between these three unknowns. We don't know them, but we know how they are related to each other. And the relationship is as follows. I S is equal to I1 plus I2. So we know the relationship, but we don't know the value. Okay, so this is another piece that, uh, of information that we could uh, kind of identify because this is a, a parallel circuit. What else do we, uh, we should maybe figure out is that we're looking for the total power dissipated by the circuit. Uh, we know from Watt's law the power is equal to uh, voltage times current. We also know that power is equal to uh, current square times resistance. And we also know that power is equal to uh, voltage square divided by resistance. So if you notice here what I've done, it's really to um, uh, to list uh, the different things that we're aware of as we kind of read the problem. Um, uh, one of the goals that I have in showing how to solve these problems is to show you my, my methodology in solving a problem, is to read. Uh, and then as I read, I try to put the different ideas that are relevant to the question. And hopefully one of them will stick, one of them will be uh, relevant to what we're doing. Of course, in an exam, you you may not have time to do all this. You go straight and try to solve the problem. So uh, in other words, this could be like an analogy when you cook, let's say, a cake. You put all the ingredients in front of you, so you know that you'll need some eggs and you'll need some oil and all that, so you prepare everything, and then you you begin uh, assembling your the steps to, to make the cake. So it's the same thing here. As I'm reading, I, I, I realize what I need, so I take out all the different things that are needed to solve this, and then now uh, I reread the question, and then I'll try to figure out how to solve it. Okay, so now we have the stuff that, that we're aware of. Uh, maybe what we could do is we could ask ourselves, in terms of the uh, power, which one can we use? Which one is it better? Well, this one has, um, if you see here, we have um, voltage and current. Voltage, we know what it is for each a resistor, but current we don't know because we have no idea what I1 and I2 is. So maybe using this is not the smartest option. The other one is the same thing. Resistance we know, but the current uh, that goes uh, through each resistor we don't know. So maybe this is also not the smartest one uh, to use. Uh, however, if you notice here, we certainly know the voltage um, across each resistor. It is always 10 volts. And we know the value of the resistance. So maybe using this would be the smartest option. Power is equal to voltage squared divided by resistance. We could certainly use this for both resistors. 
So if I were to annotate this, we would need to find the uh, power for resistor one. Let's just call it P1. And we need to find the power uh, related to resistor two, power dissipated by resistor two, and let's call it P2. So now we could certainly find the total power. It is simply the addition of this power and this power. And when I add both of them, I'll be able to find the total power. Okay, so let's, let's try it. So total power is equal to P1 plus P2, power dissipated by each resistor. And uh, uh, we also realized that the best route to find the power is to use V squared divided by R because we know the voltage here is 10 volts. We know the voltage here is 10 volts and we know the resistor here and the resistor here. So let's uh, plug uh, the values. So for the first one, it's Vs. Um, so I just reuse the value here, Vs, because they're all equal. I could have written V1 and then I know V1 is 10 volts, but we wrote Vs uh, squared divided by R1. And the S is squared divided by R2 because it's the same volts. They all have the same volts. Okay. Now what we could do is we could essentially um, factor uh, the value. Uh, maybe I could erase this so you can see what it's this part. We could factor the value um, of Vs, the voltage. I'll just take it outside. And I have 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Maybe now we could plug in the values. So the voltage is 10 volts. Uh, 10 volts uh, square and then r1 is 270 ohms r2 is 150 ohms uh, we do the calculation and we determine that the total power is 1.04 watt and that's how we were able to obtain the total uh, power okay i think it will be interesting to see how uh, we could see an example of a parallel circuit in uh, everyday real life uh, that, that we have. So let's look at this example. I think this is a, an interesting example and let's see how we can solve it. So question number eight, assume there are eight resistive wires that form a rear window defroster for a car, for an automobile, right? So these uh, defrosters that we have in the car, um, we uh, certainly in, in this country, in, in Canada, we are a northern country, and so we absolutely rely on a defroster during the winter season. Otherwise, uh, we would not be able to see uh, the, the, the back of, of, uh, of the vehicle. So, so we have a defroster. This is how it looked like. Right? So you have these lines. So if you, if you kind of look at the, at the back of your car, you see these different lines. Each of these lines uh, will, will function if you will, independently from the rest. Uh, they are all fed to the same uh, source. Uh, and because we want, uh, they wouldn't be connected in a series fashion because uh, it wouldn't make sense. If one of them goes defective, the entire circuit would be uh, non-functional. Whereas in a parallel circuit, if any of these lines goes defective, it would not harm the circuit. The rest will function. So sometimes you might see this. I've, I've had my own personal or old car where some of the lines uh, would uh, would simply not work, right? It would not uh, uh, give heat and therefore it would remain, uh, freeze, freezing would remain uh, on those areas and which kind of indicates that they're defective. Uh, so this is one of the advantage of, of, of parallel circuit is that if any of the branches goes defective, the circuit is still functional. Only those branches would not be functional. So uh, at the end of the day, what I want you to realize is that the, the, in, in such a scenario, in a window defroster, um, they, each of these wires will have some resistance. They will introduce some resistance. It's not an actual resistor that you have, but it will introduce resistance. And so let's, let's maybe look at the problem and try to, to, to see how we could make sense of it. So if the defroster dissipates 90 watts, right? So the entire defroster, this entire thing dissipates 90 watts when connected to a 12.6 volt DC. So if it is connected to a 12.6 uh, DC source, uh, it will consume 90 watts. Okay. So now the question that we ask is what power is dissipated by each resistive wire? So how much uh, uh, is dissipated by each resistive wire? And we are told that there are eight wires, eight wires, okay? And we know that they are connected in parallel. So what we could, uh, if I, in fact, do is we could kind of represent these wires. Each wire will have some resistance. There are eight of them. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
they all have the same uh, value, the, the same type of wire. So they all have uh, uh, the same uh, resistive value. Let's just call them R0 uh, across the board for the eight wires. It's a source of 12.6 volts. Uh, they're all connected in, in, um, in a parallel fashion. And now we want to know uh, what uh, the, the, the information that we have here. So the total power, P total, is equal to 90 watts, right? So P total is equal to 90 watts. And we know that the total power is, is formed by the addition of the power dissipated in each resistor. So we find uh, the power here. The power here will be dissipated by this resistor is, let's say, P0. This resistor is P0. This resistor is P0. This resistor is P0. They all have the same power because they have the same resistor and the same voltage that across it. So they will all have the same dissipated power uh, uh, by these resistors. Okay. So how many of these P naughts do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. And that's where this eight P naught comes from. Okay. So this 90 watt is equal to eight times uh, a P naught. Okay. And this is the information that we got so far. And we are looking for what is the power dissipated by each resistor? In other words, what is P naught? How do we find P naught? Well, that is just a division. We just divide 90 by 8, and that gives us 11.25 watt. So each of these uh, resistive elements or each of the resistive wires in a, de in a window defroster will introduce, uh, will uh, essentially dissipate roughly 11.3 uh, uh, watts. So that's the first uh, question that we were able to, uh, uh, to, to answer. So this is uh, done, okay? This is the answer that we got for A. Next question. So uh, we are told, uh, B, what is the total resistance of the defroster? So how much is this total resistance, right? So this is R0, R0, and we have eight of them. So what is the total resistance? So we can certainly find the, to uh, the equivalent circuit to this. The equivalent circuit will be like this. We have a source. The source is 12.6. Instead of having eight uh, parallel resistors, we could replace it by simply a, um, an equivalent circuit with just RT, R total, and, and that's it. So uh, RT, we could find it. We could find RT, uh, uh, and we'll do that on the next slide. But in the meantime, what we could uh, uh, realize is that for this circuit, the total power, right, so we're using Watt's law, is equal to the voltage the voltage across it, so the voltage across it here, uh, it's there's a plus here, there's a minus here, and this is equal to Vs, the voltage across uh, RT, and that's where we have Vs squared, divided by the resistance. So this really comes from Watt's law. So we have the voltage, is 12.6 volt. We have the total power, it's here, 90 watts. We have this, it's 90 watts. The only thing that we don't have is we don't have the total resistance. So we can certainly find this total resistance. So if we do that, we determine that the total resistance is uh, uh, 1.76 uh, 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 ohms, right? So that's what we got. And this basically answers our B. And so we got B as well. So we answered B as well. So now we need to look at C. What is the resistance of each wire? So we know the total resistance is this, but what is the resistance of each individual wire? How much each wire will contribute? With this, we don't know. So I don't have enough space here, so let's just go pick it up on the next slide. Okay, so here uh, we, we kind of bring the same information that we saw uh, from the previous slide. We got the total resistance. Now we want to find the resistance in each wire. So what we do is we could simply apply the equation for to, in order to find our total. How do we find our total when all the resistors are in parallel? Well, we basically uh, use this formula, right? So our total is equal to one over each of the resistors, one over each of the resistors, and then at the end we flip it. Uh, so we have this, we write it for eight of them. This is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight. Uh, we notice that we could, in fact, simplify this. They have a similar denominator, so we could add the numerator. So we'll have 8 over R0 to the power of minus 1. So we have to flip. 
and the total resistance will equal the individual resistance divided by 8. Or, in other words, we could find the individual resistance. We know this one here. We know this one here. We just found it. It's here. It's 1.76, right? Uh, and But we don't know what the individual resistance is. We just determined it by, by this equation here. So we could simply uh, solve for R0. And in order to solve for R0, we essentially what we do is we simply multiply 8 by our total. So 8 by 1.76. And this gives us that each individual resistor, each individual resistive wire will introduce 14.10 ohm. And if you think about it, are, is this something that we find uh, to be strange? Uh, I mean, the individual resistance seems way higher than the total resistance. Is this, is this strange? Uh, so the reality is it shouldn't be strange because we do expect the total resistance to be smaller than the smallest resistance. Here, all the resistance are of 14 uh, ohms. So this will be smaller than 14 ohms, and it is certainly smaller than 14 ohms. So I don't think there's anything uh, strange with that. So that's a quick sanity check to see if there's any um, uh, unusual result that we got. Good. Following are some key terminologies and definitions. If you're interested, um, you could pause and, and read it. We certainly did uh, cover them uh, in the lecture. Here we have a few multiple choice uh, exercises related to the lecture. We could uh, go through it together to see how we could uh, converge to the answer. So let's read question number one. The uh, total uh, uh, resistance of uh, parallel resistors is equal to which one? And so maybe just kind of a reminder. This is what we have. We have some source. We have a resistor here. Let's say we have uh, two resistors in parallel. And it's this, this is your R1, this is your R2, this is your ground, this is your VS, this is your IS, this is your I1, and this is your I2. And the voltage here that is dropped around R1 is plus here, minus here, V1 plus here, minus here, V2, okay? And we know a couple of things. IS is equal to uh, the addition of both currents, I1 and I2. I1 and I2. As for the voltages, uh, well, uh, VS is equal to V1, uh, well, sorry, and is also equal to uh, V2. Right? The voltages are the same, the current is added. Another thing that we could also uh, figure out is the total resistance. Total resistance, we could, we could basically say R1 is in parallel with R2, R2 right? And we saw the symbol, the symbol here, this is a symbol to say that two components are in parallel, right? So parallel. Parallel. Okay. So uh, we could also find this this the the total resistance. Total resistance is, uh, I mean, by definition, is one over R one plus one over R two, and then you do the reciprocal. Okay. Or if you want, you could use the shortcut which is uh, much smarter in the case of only two resistors, is you multiply R1 to R2 uh, in the numerator. In the denominator, you add R1 and R2, okay? You simply add them together. And this is what you get. Okay, so maybe we could go through uh, uh, the, uh, the question again. So the total resistance of parallel resistors is equal to which one? Um, uh, so A, we tell you it is the sum of the resistances. So here we're saying you just add the resistances. You do R1 plus R2, and this would be your R total. Well, certainly this is wrong. So this is not true. This does not apply for parallel circuit. Number two, we tell you the sum of the reciprocal of the resistances. So we say it's 1 over R1. 
plus 1 over R2. And we tell you that the total resistance is this. Um, this is also not true, so this is also wrong. So this does not apply. The uh, C, we tell you it is the sum of the conductance. So if you have the conductance, so basically you would do G1 plus G2, sum of the conductance. And G1 and G2, well, they're conductance. So essentially it goes back to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Uh, and that's also not true, right? We want you there is the 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 minus uh, the to the power of minus one is not there, so this is also wrong. So C is wrong. Uh, none of the above. This is in fact the correct answer. So we expect D to be the correct answer. So notice how we converse to the answer. We really went through the process of uh, elimination. Good. Next question. Okay, question number two. The number of nodes in a parallel circuit is what? Is it one node? Is it two nodes? Is it three nodes? Is it any number? Uh, so uh, maybe just a, as a refresher, a parallel circuit, let's say with two resistors, is a source, and you have a resistor like this, you have another resistor like this, and then you converge, of course, you also have your ground, like here. So this is your R1, and this is your R2. And uh, as we said before, this would be a node and this would be another node, right? So these are the two nodes that you have, the first node and this is the second node. If you will, why, do, I mean, I mean, so you might be confused because you say, well, this seems like a node and this is a node. Uh, yeah, but they're all together. This is, the wire here is not really necessary. In other words, I could show you how, how you could do it and I'll show it to you, in fact, with but maybe three resistors. So what if you have such a thing? Um, and you have this, 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 something like this, right? So this is your source VS, this is your source VS. Uh, maybe we we'll put a ground as well. This is your R1. This is your R2. And this is your R3. So this is also a parallel circuit because if you notice, we again have two nodes. We have this node here and we have this node here. They're, they're, it's, it's, it's kind of like this one. I mean, if you will, maybe we could adjust the first image as well. If we have a third resistor, and this would be our R3, we still have only two nodes. It doesn't change, right? The, in other words, these two uh, circuits, they are exactly the same thing, right? They are the same, same. It's just the way that we, we display it to you is different. So at the, at the end of the day, you have a node here, you have another node here, and the same thing here in this, uh, in this showing uh, of the same circuit, you have a node here and a node here. So when we talk of parallel circuits, you pretty much only have two nodes. So let's go through the process of, uh, of elimination here. Uh, is it one node? No, that's not true. Is it three nodes? No, that's not true for a parallel circuit. Is it any number? No, that's also not true. You cannot choose any number. So it is really B, two nodes. So we expect B to be the answer. Okay, question number three, we ask, what is the total resistance of the following parallel uh, circuit, the, the following uh, circuit where you have the resistors placed in uh, in parallel. So you have R1 10K, R2 10K, and R3 5.1K. So we could simply uh, use the formula. Total resistance would be here, RT, between uh, this node and this node. So it's looking at it this way. And we could find this RT, so R total is equal to um, 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, okay? And we do the reciprocal of that. And this is uh, very important not to forget the reciprocal uh, here, this one here. Not to forget it, like I mentioned in the lecture, students tend to forget this. So let's enter some numbers. So everything is in kilo. It has to be the same uh, prefix. So we could do the, the calculation. 
um, as we discussed in lecture one. So let's just do it. So one over 10 plus one over 10 uh, plus uh, one over 5.1. We don't need to write kilo because everything is in kilo and the final result will also be in kilo. So there's no need to write the kilo. And then don't forget your minus one here. So this equals to one divided by 10, that's 0 0.1. One divided by 10 is 0 0.1. So we have 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1, that becomes uh, 0 0.2 plus one over 5.1, okay? And then reciprocal. So we can take a calculator, do the, the calculation uh, quickly. 5.1, we do one over that, plus 0.2, we do reciprocal, and we get 2.2.52, and then that's a five here. Uh, and the value should be in kilo ohm because everything is in kilo ohm. So now let's look at this. Let's look at this total resistance that we got and um, use the sanity check. The sanity check tells us the total resistance of a parallel circuit should be smaller than the smallest resistance. So if we look at the smallest resistance, well, it's this one here. Is this one smaller than 5.1? It is smaller than 5.1. So I think it passes the sanity check. And we expect the answer to be 2.525 uh, uh, or 53 or somewhere around that. So let's go maybe through the process of, uh, of elimination. Is it 3.3? No. Is it 5.1? No. Is it 25.1? No. It is 2.52 uh, kilo ohm. The answer should be 8. Okay. Question number four, if three equal resistors are in parallel, what is the total resistance? So we have three resistors, resistor one, resistor two, resistor three. They are placed in parallel. Uh, let's also put a source. The source is not necessary, but it helps to see what's going on. And we want to know what is our T here between these two nodes right this node and this node looking at it this way okay this is our first resistor this is our second resistor and this is our third resistor now we're telling you all the three are equal they're equal so we could simply call them the first resistor we could call it r naught second resistor we could also call it r naught and the third resistor will also be r naught because they are equal so how do we find the total resistance well, we uh, go through the, the equation. So R total is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. And don't forget your reciprocal. And that becomes 1 over R0 plus, oops, plus one over, I'm doing it slowly so everybody can follow properly. One over R naught plus one over R naught, okay? Don't forget your parentheses and the reciprocal. And this really equals to, the, de the denominator is the same, so you could add the numerator. So that becomes three over R naught, okay? And then you do the reciprocal. So what do we get now? We flip it, it becomes R naught over three. This is the result that we get, R naught over three, okay? I'm sorry, this is supposed to show a three here. Okay, so this is the total resistance that we expect to get once the, since the, the, the resistors are all the same. Um, if we do the sanity check that we like to do, so we look at the smallest resistance, well, they're all the same value, so A, pick any of them, let's just say this one here, is R0 divided by three less than R0? Yeah, it is. So that pa it passes the sanity check uh, as well, so this is great. 
So now let's go through the process of elimination and remove those that don't make sense. So three equal resistors are in parallel. The total resistance is one third the value of one resistor. One third the value, well, this is correct. So the answer seems to be A. But let's still uh, go through the rest of the letters and then remove uh, them uh, just to make sure. The same as one resistor, that's not true. The total resistance is not the same as one resistor. Three times the value of one resistor, this is not true. It would be true if these resistors were connected in series, but not if they are connected in parallel. So C is also not true. The product of the three resistors, no, this is like absolutely wrong. Here, basically what this means is you simply do R0 times R0 times R0, so it will be R0 cube. No, there's, there's no such thing in with resistance. So this is absolutely wrong. So the answer, like we expected, is indeed A. Okay. Question five, in any uh, circuit, the total current entering a node is which one? Um, so maybe just a, a quick recap. So if we have some node uh, within the electrical uh, circuit that we, that we have, uh, the circuit could be simple, could be complex, but at the end of the day, there's a node. So this is a node, okay? And to a node, there are certain, uh, so there are different paths to the node, let's say, you have two different paths uh, toward the circuit and then one path that leaves the node. So if you do the trace for the current uh, from the source, you'll kind of get a, an idea of how um, the flow of the current is. And, and we don't know, we don't know the rest of the circuit, but we know certainly that there is some current that enters uh, this node. Let's, I don't know, maybe we could call it I1 here. And we know another uh, current comes from another branch of the circuit called I2. So it really flows this way, right? Um, and, and it merges at the node, and then this merger of the current uh, moves toward this area of the, uh, of the node. So this is your node, two path comes in, it merges, and you get some other current, some I3. Now, simply by looking at this, you could right away write a, a, a result. You could say that the node entering are positive currents and the node leaving is a negative current, right? So the node entering, so it would be plus I1. Anything that enters the, the node, it's a positive, plus I2. And I3, it leaves the node. So we write minus I3, okay? Uh, equals to zero, right? And this is really what KCL is, right? KCL, as we explained in the lecture, is, is essentially this. So this is a review of KCL, Kirchhoff's current law. Or if you will, you could rearrange it and say that I3, the current in I3, is equal to I1 uh, plus I2. Okay. So this is kind of uh, a, a recap of, of what KCL is. They're both the same. Here, with the equality of zero, is from the KCL definition, and this is if we rearrange it and represent it in, in something that is a bit easier to comprehend, okay? Uh, and that's exactly by simply looking at the circuit and looking at a specific node. Current uh, entering a node is positive, current leaving a node is negative. So now let's reread the question. Question five, in any circuit, the total current entering a node, so the, 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 so the total current would be this, right? If you add them, uh, in this path, there is some I1 current. In the other path, there's some I2 current. So this is it, I1 plus I2. Um, the total node the entering a node is less than the total current leaving the node. Well, that's not true, right? Nothing should be lost, right? So the current that enters should be the same current that leaves, right? So this doesn't make sense. This is wrong. A is wrong. Unless there's some loss and then the current goes somewhere else. But, but in general, this is wrong. It doesn't make any sense. B. Um, uh, the, the current entering a node is equal to the total current leaving the node, this is correct. This really explains this thing here, right? It really explains KCL. So this really is, uh, but it goes to the definition of what KCL is, it is. So it's really, it seems like it, the answer is B, but let's check C and D. So the current entering a node is greater than the total current leaving the node. That also doesn't make any sense. It has to be the same, it cannot be greater. Uh, the current entering a node uh, can be 
uh, any of the above, depending on the circuit, this is also not true. So the answer should uh, really be uh, B because of Kirchhoff's current law. Okay. Okay, so we have we are now at question six. The question tells us the following: the current divided formula to find I one for the special case of two resistors is which one? So maybe we could uh, explain this by, in fact, showing the circuit. The circuit in this situation would be uh, as follows: we do have some source, V S, right? We know that um, the, the we want to apply a current divided rule and uh, we are told that we will have two resistors so if you have a current divided rule when the re two resistors are connected in parallel so if you notice the word parallel was not mentioned in the question but just be through knowing that you have to do current divided rule you have to set up a parallel circuit and this is your uh, r1 this is your r2 Okay, and let's also uh, show where the current is. So the current um, here, this is your uh, I total or IS, if you will, uh, that flows here. This current uh, part part of it comes uh, to R1. The rest goes to R2. So the one the part that comes to R1 is called I1. The part that goes to R2 is called I2. It goes back. It leaves uh, the resistor. It merges at this uh, node, uh, and uh, your I total is formed back. We get I total again through the merger of I1 and I2, and we go back to the to the source. Okay, so this is exactly what we did. So we are told for the special case of two resistors, we have two resistors, R1 and R2, and we're told to find I1. How do we find I1? Well, we know through the um, uh, the current divider rule that I1 will equal to uh, the total current, I total, and then you do a ratio, a ratio of um, a small, a small value over a large value of resistance. Now this is a trick that I do for myself so I don't forget the equation and this also is useful to not memorize the equation because this small over large is also true when you do K, uh, the voltage divider rule that we saw in the previous lecture. So the small value of two resistors in parallel would be there looking at them in parallel. So it's R1 in parallel with R2, right? When you take R1 in R2 in parallel, the result that you get will be smaller than the smallest uh, resistor, and therefore this will be a, a small value. And then um, you put the large value, so which is uh, since we're doing it for I1 in the bottom, it has to be R1. Okay, so this is R1 in parallel with R2 divided by R1, right? So, I mean, this is, I, I hope this is clear by now. These two bars, it means that R1 and R2 are in parallel. Okay, so if this is the equation, then how do we uh, simplify? Um, so I don't really have space, so I'm gonna just move up here to continue the work. So uh, I'm gonna rewrite it here. So we have I1 equals to I total. Uh, R1 in parallel with R2. When we have two resistors that are in parallel, we know there is this equation that we memorized, hopefully by now, it's R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2, okay? So this thing here, this thing essentially is equal to this R1 in parallel with R2, right? All this part. That's what it means, this, this part here. And we know that we also have to divide by R1. We divide by R1, which is this one here, the, the one in the bottom. That's where uh, this R1 is. Okay, so now maybe we could simplify some, some division here. It's just normal uh, uh, arithmetic. So we have I total. Then we have, maybe we could use a different color. So this R1. In this R1, they cancel each other. 
so they're gone. On top, you have an R2. So you have an R2 on top. And in the bottom, you'll have an R1 plus R2. R1 plus R2. Okay. Let's not forget the parentheses. Here too, we shouldn't forget the parentheses. Okay. And this is what we get. So maybe we can put it in a nice box. So this is the result that we got. Okay, so I1 is equal to I total times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So if we go through uh, the list here, uh, and maybe we could check um, which one is which. This has an R1 on top. This is wrong. Not true. This one has an um, uh, uh, this one has an R1 on top with an uh, R1 plus R2. This is also not correct. Uh, this one here, you have um, uh, so you have this one here, uh, which is R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times I total. So C seems uh, uh, to be the correct answer. This one here, that's exactly what we got. Or uh, it's also showing you that it is R2 divided by uh, R total. Uh, this is not correct because our total don't don't be fooled here our total uh, so this might um, make you believe our total by our total we mean r1 plus r2 it's not the case these are parallel so our total is r1 in parallel with r2 so this is in fact wrong so the answer uh, uh, should be uh, c so let's just check that's exactly what we got okay question seven um, we are uh, asking the following. So the total current leaving the source is which one? So let's maybe annotate and that should uh, help us figure out what's going on. So we do have uh, the source here, Vs, 12 volts. It will have a current that leaves uh, the source. Uh, this current will then go to resistor R1 and some part of it will go to resistor R2. It will pass through the resistors, uh, so R1 and R2. It will merge back again into the bottom node, and uh, uh, the total uh, current is formed back, and it goes back again to the source. Okay, so maybe we could give them some, some naming here. Here we use Vs, so voltage source is equal to 12 volts. So maybe we use the uh, IS convention. So the total current, uh, we call it IS here. And this IS is split between I1 and I2, okay? And we know through uh, KCL, right, that, um, that IS is equal to I1 plus I2, okay? Uh, so let's see what what we have so far. So we have this, this, this. That's perfect. And we're asking us what is the total current leaving the source. So total current leaving the source is really this I S that we're asking us. We want to know what uh, this one is, right? This value. What is this value? Well, this is what we're looking for. Okay. So one way to do this. Uh, and perhaps it could be the smartest way to do this, would be to find the total resistance, build it uh, an equivalent circuit, uh, and then uh, figure out the rest. So if we build an equivalent circuit, maybe I could show you the equivalent circuit here. Um, we will, equivalent circuit will have a source. The source will be 12 volts, okay? Instead of having two resistors, we could just have one resistor, right and at the bottom we have the ground this resistor that we have is we can call it our total and our total is in fact the r1 in parallel with r2 right? this is what our total is is looking at r1 and r2 in parallel okay and now we're asking us uh well what is this current that leaves the source, which we decided to call IS, 
and it goes into this uh, this this current, okay, and into this uh, uh, total resistance, uh, which is uh, basically formed by the parallel of R1 and R2. So this is nothing else but uh, Ohm's law, right? This is just Ohm's law. Uh, but before we do that, we really need to find a value for this R, uh, uh, for this R total. Well, we need to, to determine this. So when we have R1 in parallel with R2, uh, we could also write it as 10K, 10, in parallel with 2. Right? So you have 10K in parallel with 2. And this is nothing else but the multiplication. So if you recall the, uh, the formula that we studied, this 10 times 2 in the numerator, so 10 times 2 in the numerator, and then 10 plus 2 in the denominator, okay? So 10 uh, times 2, this becomes 20, and 10 plus 2, this becomes 12. So it's just a matter of figuring out uh, 20 divided uh, by 12, and that's uh, about uh, what what we have to do. So this should be um, uh, 1.67 kilo ohm. Right, kilo ohm. Be careful here. Uh, this is everything that we have is in kilo. This is in kilo. This is in kilo, and therefore this will also be in kilo. And we said it is always important to do a sanity check. Uh, so for sanity check, what we could do is figure out uh, if the value that we got is smaller than the smallest resistance. The smallest resistance is this, is 2K, and 1.67 is certainly smaller than 2K. Okay, so this passes the, uh, the sanity check here. So, so our total that we got seems uh, correct. Now at this point, what we have to do is we basically have to find... Uh, this value, right? We don't know what this value is. Uh, this uh, uh, current IS, this will give us the value that we're looking for. So uh, I'm going to just carry this calculation here. I'm going to just carry this calculation and do it here. So IS through Ohm's law. Ohm's law is e V is equal to RI, or I is equal to voltage divided by resistance. The voltage is 12 volts, the VS. The resistance is the R total. Okay. Let's plug in the values. So we have 12 on top. In the bottom, we have 1.67. 1.67 K. And so we expect something with milli, with milliamps. So let's do this. So 12 divided, I'm going to use the calculator. 12 divided by 1.67. And that gives us 7.7. .7 point one nine one nine uh milli because you have a k in the bottom milliamps okay so this is what we got here seven point nineteen milliamps this is the answer oops i wanted to do a star but i messed it up so seven point nineteen milliamps so if we go check, is it 1 milliamp? No, this is wrong. Is it 1.2 milliamp? This is wrong. Is it 6 milliamp? This is wrong. And it is certainly uh, this one here, 7.2 milliamp. So uh, we, uh, we, we basically have the answer. It's, it should be D. So we could check. Okay. Question eight, we are asking uh, the following. What is the current in resistor one? So we want to know the current that flows uh, uh, through resistor one. And that's the question. In fact, if, you, if we have this current, we could also find the current that flows into resistor two. Uh, and it's just a matter of applying KCL. Okay, uh, by the way, this, um, uh, I perhaps showed you this before, but you can think of this, uh, it is a source, it's a supply, it is what supplies the, um, uh, your circuit, uh, but it's not a voltage supply, it's not a voltage DC supply, uh, it is a current supply. So it's, uh, uh, it's a current supply, uh, but it is essentially what feeds the entire circuit. So I don't think you should worry too much. It does have a current. Uh, we know the value of it. it. It supplies a current of 20 milliamps, uh, and it should also have a voltage, a voltage uh, across it. 
the voltage across this uh, source will be in fact the same voltage across R1 and the same voltage across R2 and this is because of um, uh, because uh, the, the circuit here is a parallel circuit okay so let's let's apply this let's try to solve it uh, but first of all maybe we could begin by putting the ground so the ground wasn't shown in the in the figure there should be always be a ground you have uh, your current it flows uh, from the source from the current source like this uh, let's call it an, a name is uh, so here we just put an s it's a source of 20 milliamps this current then is split uh, part of it will go uh, through resistor one the remaining part will go uh, through resistor uh, two let's call it i2 here let's call it i1 here uh, this current will then leave resistor 1. This current 2 will leave resistor 2. It will come to this node and it will reform uh, again and goes back to the uh, current source. So the IS is formed again here. Uh, and of course, this here you get your I1. Here you get your I2. And, uh, and uh, it, you, you, you find your IS back again. So we have a closed uh, loop like this. We also can find the voltages. Uh, here, no, nobody's asking us about voltages, but it's not a bad idea to also show the, the voltages. So the, you have a plus, you have a minus, you have a plus, you have a minus. This is V2, the voltage uh, across uh, uh, resistor 2, the voltage V1 across uh, uh, resistor 1. And also the voltage here uh, would be like this, and this is the voltage soar, uh, here. All the voltages are the same. Uh, so V1 is equal to V2 is equal to Vs. As for the current, well, Is, current Is is equal to I1 uh, plus I2. And this is true because of uh, KCL. Okay, so this really comes from KCL. Okay, so now we are asking us the following. Um, this is the question. What is the current in R1? In other words, what is this? What is I1? So how do we find I1? We could use the uh, current divider rule. I1 is equal the total current, right, which we call IS. And we do a ratio, a ratio of a uh, small value over a large value. The small value will be um, uh, the combination of both resistors, R1 and R2. We said when we have R1 in, par uh, in parallel with another resistor, it will be smaller than the smallest value. Therefore, it has to be in the numerator. And in the denominator, we put the larger value, which is the, the resistors related to, I, uh, to I1. What is the resistance related to I1? Well, it is R1, and that's what we put in the bottom. Okay, so now let's just uh, plug in some, uh, some values. So IS is 20 milli. 20 milli, 20 milliamp. For the ratio, we do R1. R1 is 100 ohm in parallel with R2 is 200 ohm over uh, resistor R1, which is 100 ohm. Okay. Maybe we could open a sidebar here. Uh, maybe here and figure out what is 100 in parallel with 200. Well, that you could just go back to the uh, to the uh, formula that we showed you when we have two resistors. You simply multiply uh, the values on top. So 100 times 200. And in the bottom, in the denominator, you add the values. So 100 plus 200. Okay, so what you get is the following. You get two on top with uh, four zeros. One, two, three, four. And in the bottom, you get 300. You could uh, simplify by removing the two zeros on top, two zeros in the bottom. And now you could uh, find um, the value, which is 200 divided by three. And this should give you 66 0.7 ohm 66.7 ohm so 100 ohm in parallel with 200 ohm should be 66.7 ohm if we do sanity check is 66.7 ohm smaller than the smallest resistance which is 100 it is 
So it seems like it is correct. So this thing here, this thing here is equal to 66.7. Okay, so now if we uh, take a calculator and, and do this, this division, so we do 66.7 divided by 100, okay, and then we multiply by 20, and that gives us 13.34, 13, .34, 13 uh, 13.34 milliamps. So this is the result that we got. Okay, so this is what it is. I1 is equal to 13.34 milliamp. So if we check the options that we have, uh, well, this is uh, it's not A, that's wrong. Uh, it's not C, that's wrong. It's not D, that's wrong. The answer seems to be um, uh, uh, exactly uh, uh, B, right? So the answer that we expect to get, it's really B, and that's that's the, what, what we should uh, get. So let's just check. Okay, let's go. Question nine, we ask the following question. The voltage across R2 is what? So uh, this is uh, uh, R1, and this is R2. In fact, if you look at the circuit, uh, so, so again, this is R1, and this is R2. And if you, if you look at the circuit, this is exactly the same circuit that we saw in question eight. And if you recall from question eight, we did determine the current here, the current that flows here. Uh, I think it, it was 13.3 uh, milliamp. But here, let's assume we don't know this, we don't have this knowledge. Otherwise, if we had this knowledge, and we know the current because the other question had that current, it would be that current that we found, 13.3, times the resistance, times the 100, and right away we should we should uh, converge to the answer. But let's assume we didn't know the uh, question eight, we, we didn't see that question, this is a brand new question. Uh, so what would we do in order to find the voltage across uh, R2? So first thing first, maybe what we could do is we look at the uh, the path of the current. So uh, as we saw in question eight, the current flows from the uh, current source like this. It comes in and you have 20 milliamps. The 20 milliamps, this, this here, maybe we could call it IS, IS, the 20 milliamps, it comes in, it is split uh, in two parts, in two branches. Part of it will come here and then the rest will come uh, on this side here, right? So part of it will go to I1. To the, through the first resistor. The rest will go through the second resistor and it will leave the resistor. It will leave this resistor as well. It will re-emerge and it will go back uh, to the current source. Right? So IS is formed again. Okay. Uh, because the current is flowing this way, we can uh, determine the, uh, the polarity of the voltage. So you'll have a plus here, you'll have a minus here, and we could call this V1 the voltage uh, across the first resistor. Because the current is flowing in this direction, I2, the plus will be here, the minus will be here, and this is the voltage V2 across um, the second resistor. Uh, and uh, so now we kind of have an idea, we did annotate the, the circuit, and I think we are ready to solve this. So now we're asking you, what is the voltage across R2? In other words, we're asking you, what is V2? This is the question. What is V2? And this is what we want to find. Okay. So uh, in order to find V2, what we could do, uh, for instance, um, we could certainly, uh, uh, I mean, we could certainly apply uh, the current divider rule, determine the current that flows here, this I2. And then what, now that we have I2, we could uh, uh, then use Ohm's law and determine V2. So that's one method. The second method that we could apply would be to, for instance, find the, um, uh, the equivalent resistance, the total resistance of, this, um, of these two resistors, find an equivalent circuit, determine the voltage across the equivalent uh, resistance, and that should also be the same uh, voltage. Okay, so maybe I could, uh, I could explain a bit more. So here we said the voltage V1 is the voltage uh, across resistor 1. Voltage V2 is the voltage across resistor 2. 
Uh, also, if you want, you want to find the voltage here, the voltage of the source, it will also be uh, voltage Vs. Now, all of these voltages, the voltage of the source, the voltage V1 and V2, what do we expect them to be? Everything is connected in, uh, uh, in a parallel. So we expect all these voltages, Vs to equal V1 to equal V2. They're all the same because they're, they're connected in parallel. And now we're interested to find V2. So at the end of the day, if you find any of them, you found all of them, right? They're, they're the same. So what we could do uh, in the other uh, approach that I proposed would be to find an equivalent circuit, an equivalent circuit, a circuit that resembles this one, uh, equivalent, uh, but more simpler. So maybe what we could do is this. We could have a source, uh, a current source. This is 20 milliamp. 20 milliamp. We have a resistor. A resistor like this. Um, and, and of course, we also have the ground. I'm going to put it on the side. The resistor is our total. And the current that flows here is, is really this, this IS of 20 milliamps. And the voltage that you have here for the source, VS, or if you will, for the voltage for uh, uh, total, total voltage, uh, it's, it's the same, right? It's exactly what V2 is. So this is what we want. For, first of all, this means that we need to find uh, our total. Well, we could find our total. Our total is, is equal to what? It's equal to R1 in parallel with R2, okay? And this, uh, by knowing the equation for two resistors, you multiply the resistors. So you do 100 times 200. And you divide by their addition. So it's 100 plus 200. Okay. And this should give us the total resistance. So if we do that, let's do this right now. So 100 times 200 is uh, uh, 20K, 20,000. So that's two with four zeros, 20,000. And then 100 plus 200, that's 300. We could cancel the uh, zeros. So zero and zero cancel with zero and zero. So we have 200 divided by three, and this should essentially give us um, a value of um, 66, 66.7 uh, ohms, 66.7 ohms. So this is the total resistance, 66.7 ohms. Is, do we think there is something wrong with this value? We could check, do a sanity check very quickly. Is uh, 66.7 ohms smaller than the smallest resistance? Is it smaller than 100 ohm? Uh, it is smaller than 100 ohm, so it seems like this is a, a correct value. So now we have the uh, this uh, current, but we have this resistance, right? We know the value, it's 66.7 ohms. We know the current, the current is 20 milliamps, 20 milliamps what we could do at this point would be to simply find the voltage across the total resistance the voltage across the total of resistance will be in fact the voltage v2 because they are all the same right so how do we do that well this is what we do v total will equal to v2 in fact it will equal all of them v1 and all that so it's simply equal to uh, 20 milliamps the current uh, f uh, from the current source, we know this, times the total resistance, which is 66.7. Uh, so if we do the multiplication times 20, we get um, uh, we get this. We get 30. Uh, so hold on, sorry. 20 times 66.7. So we get 
33 4 volts. This is what we get. So if we come here, uh, we could, so it's not A, it's not B. It seems like the answer is C. This is what we uh, uh, found, and it's not D. So we expect the answer to be C. By the way, we could, like I said uh, at the start of this problem, we could have also found this uh, differently. What we could have done uh, was uh, to, to find uh, I2, I2, right? using the, uh, the current divider rule, right? Once we found I2, then we could have right away from the current divider rule, we could have found V2, and V2 would simply be uh, the resistor R2 times I2, okay? Uh, times I2. Now, how do you find I2? Well, from the current divider rule. So we know that I2 is equal to I, uh, total, which is IS here, 20 uh, milliamp, and we do a ratio, small versus large. The larger current will be um, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the, the larger resistance will be um, the, uh, the resistor R2, so it will be here, and the smaller resistance will be the combination of R1 and R2. It will be R1 in parallel with R2, okay? And you get this, you find this, and then you plug it in here, and that should get you your, your V2. But notice in this, how many uh, how many work would you need to do? Well, you have to do a bunch of things. You need to, first of all, determine this. That's the first step. Then you need to determine this. That's the second step. Then you need to do Ohm's law. That's the third step. Whereas in what we did, uh, it, it, it seems like it's shorter to, to, to get to the answer. We found uh, this first step, similar to, to here. We found it. And then at, once we had this, then we had nothing else to do but just to multiply Ohm's law, right? So here, we didn't really need to use uh, the current divider rule. So here, with the method that I solved, it was just two steps. With this method, it's three steps. Uh, so it's always we always tell you to work smart, don't work hard, uh, and uh, and that's what, what what you need to do. Uh, but look, when you do an exam, maybe you you don't have time to think about the different uh, possibilities in advance. You just want to solve and move on. Whatever gets you to the answer, go for it. But if you can find shortcuts, uh, do it because it means that you will get to the answer faster. So now we expect really C to be uh, to be the answer. So maybe we could check. Uh, that's great. Okay, finally, we are at question number 10, uh, and the question is as follows. Uh, the total power dissipated in a parallel circuit is equal to which of the following? So maybe just to, um, just to kind of help us uh, understand the question, maybe uh, I'll just show you one, uh, a parallel circuit very quickly, maybe with um, three resistors. Uh, it could be two resistors or it could be four resistors. It doesn't matter. But in this case, let's just use three uh, just to kind of understand what's going on. This is the source. This is the current that flows in here. And then the current is split uh, to the different uh, branches. This is R1. This is R2. And this is R3. And all the voltages that you have uh, will be uh, the same. So basically your V3, uh, your, um, perhaps we could change color, your V3, your V2, and your V1, as well as the Vs here, they all have the same voltage, right? So V1, Vs, is equal to V1, is equal to V2, uh, is equal to V3. Uh, and as for the current IS, is equal to I1, uh, I2, the current that, flow, uh, that flows here, and I3 here. Okay, so through KCL, we know that IS 
is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. So this is from KCL. Uh, so this is KCL. And KCL is always related to a parallel circuit. KVL is always related to a series circuit. And this one here, this is true for a parallel uh, circuit. Anytime you have a parallel circuit, this, this will be true. The voltage uh, across the different components as well as the source will be the same. Okay, so now with this recap, let's just see what is the power dissipated. So the, the power dissipated by each uh, component, uh, we could maybe give them names. So let's 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 the power dissipated by this resistor. Let's just call it P1. Power dissipated by second resistor, we'll call it P2. And power dissipated by the third resistor, we'll call it P3. So the total power uh, will be the addition of P1 plus P2 plus P3. Now, uh, what do we know of power? Well, for the power, we could always use uh, Watt's law. So uh, there's three varieties for that. P is equal to VI, P is equal to V squared divided by R, and P is equal to uh, I squared R. So depending on what you have, you could certainly find uh, the power for the first the resistor, power for the second resistor, power for the third, and then add them together. Okay, so this is kind of the, the background to, to a parallel circuit. So knowing this, equipped with this, uh, let's let's see if we can answer this. So we're ask we're asking us what is the total power dissipated in a parallel circuit? Um, so it's equal to the power in the largest resistor. That's not quite true because if you look at your PT here, uh, there's no mention of a bigger resistor or not. It's just all the contributions should be accounted for. So A is wrong. Is the power in the smallest resistor? This is also wrong. It's all resistors. It's not, it's not about the largest resistor or the smallest resistor. It's all the resistors. Here, see, we're telling you uh, the it, it would be the average of the power in all resistors. So in other words, we're telling you that do the addition of the power, right? Do the addition of the power. So you have three resistors. You would add uh, the three powers. And then you, uh, you want to find the average. So you divide by three. So here, what you're do basically doing is finding, um, you know, the, the the statistical expression here. Uh, you're finding a p bar or, or the average, okay? So or p f, okay? And that's not that's not that's not how you find uh, the total resistance. This does not equal to total resistance. Uh, so this would also be wrong. Um, so so in this case, uh, this is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. And if we read the, th the, the last one, it says it's the sum of the power in all resistors. And that's, this is the correct one, right? This is exactly what we did. We, we summed the power from each resistor. So it's really uh, uh, this the, the, that would be the, the correct answer. It's really uh, D, the correct answer. And we could certainly uh, check this. Uh, and that's exactly it. So uh, anyways, thank you for your attention and uh, good luck with your studies.